Hey guys, welcome, good to have you here. Game dev typically attracts two groups of people. The first group comes from a technical background. They already know how to code. There's a bit of a learning curve with shifting their skill sets towards game dev, yes. But at the core, they know how to make the gears turn. They know how they can architect a game. And they usually struggle with art. And we recently made a video for that group if you want to go check that out. But the second group is the complete opposite. They already have art down. Again, there might be a bit of a learning curve with transferring their skill sets to a digital form. But at the core, they know art. They're not going to struggle too much. And what this group tends to struggle with is with the technical side, with the code. If you're in that group, then stick around because this video is for you. And by the end, of this video you will know how to think like a programmer. So if you are watching this then chances are very high that you are either using Unreal, Godot, or Unity to build your game. This video is not about which engine you should use, honestly they are all fantastic. You cannot go wrong with any one of them. What I will tell you though is what your technical options are going to be based on which engine you choose. So let's start with Unreal. Unreal at its core was designed to get devs to use visual scripting. Unreal's solution is called Blueprints. Alternatively, you can code in C++, which is a super fast, but not very beginner friendly coding language. But Blueprints is by far the most popular choice. There are third party alternatives in their marketplace. For example, Skookum Script. I think I'm saying that right. So if learning to code is something that you're struggling with, then learning to code C++ is probably not going to be your fastest solution. So your best options here are probably either to use Blueprints or some third party application. And if you want to use Unreal, then you'll just need to do a little bit of research to see which choice is right for you. But what you will find is that the most documentation and the most amount of tutorials available online will be using Blueprints. So you have the most resources available to you if you use Blueprints. Now Godot does not have a built-in visual scripting solution anymore. Although to my surprise, it actually does have an asset store called the Godot Asset Library. And it's not nearly as extensive or as commercialized as Unity or Unreal's asset stores, but it has been steadily growing for years. So there might be some visual scripting solutions already available on there. But again, if learning to program is something that you struggle with, then sticking with the most popular approach is going to give you the most resources to allow you to learn. So what Godot supports is their own scripting language called GDScript. It also supports C Sharp, C and C++, though you will find the tightest integrations with GDScript and GDScript is the most popular option. And if you are using Unity, then your options to actually type out the code are using C Sharp, which is by far the most popular option you're gonna find. But in 2020, they acquired Bolt and rebranded it as Unity Visual Scripting. So there is a visual scripting solution built in like Blueprints as well. Or a popular paid alternative is Playmaker, which is actually what Team Cherry, the creators of Hollow Knight used to make their game. So those those are your programming options based on the most popular game engines. But here's the thing. It doesn't really matter how you end up coding your game. It all takes the same skills and it all requires you to think the same way. I know that for someone that doesn't know code, if you look at somebody's computer monitor and you see code on there, it looks like complete gibberish, I know. But I have played around with node-based systems. I've become quite proficient with C Sharp. I've dabbled with JavaScript and Python, and I even helped my daughter learn Scratch when she was eight, which by the way is a great platform for kids if they wanna get into developing. But all of those require the same skill sets. They all require the same thought process. The syntax changes, your available tools to help you solve certain problems change, but the way you have to think stays the same no matter what language you're writing. And learning to code is really just a little bit of memorization in terms of what syntax you need to use and what certain nodes or components actually do. But after that it's really just a matter of learning to think like a programmer. If you have ever spoken to anyone that knows how to code and you told them you're interested and you ask them, where should I start? They never ever give you a straight answer. The answer is always, it depends. What do you want to do? And it's really frustrating for people that don't understand code because they just want to know what is the easiest language to get into. But it doesn't matter because it is true. It does depend on what you want to do. And in terms of game development specifically, it's more a question of which engine are you using? And then based on that, what suits your style more? Typing it out or a more visual style? It doesn't matter. It's the same logic, same problem solving skills you'll need to acquire, same debugging skills you'll need to learn. This is why programmers have almost no trouble picking up more than one programming language. When you know one, you are never starting at ground zero again. So if you are currently in a place where you feel like you truly suck at coding, 
then there's no getting around this one thing. It doesn't matter whether you use natively what your engine just happens to use. It doesn't matter whether you use the most popular option for your engine or if you go to the asset store and you buy yourself something that's supposed to make it really, really easy. You're still gonna have to learn to think like a programmer and this does take practice and time. What I'm about to say, I don't think it can be stated enough because if you go online and you go to some Discord server or some Reddit thread or some forum somewhere, you are inevitably at some point going to come across some code that you do not understand in the slightest, even though it's written in the language that you do know how to code in. And when you are constantly coming across stuff like that, it's going to make you feel like you don't know anything. However, here is the reality of the situation. This is the thing that actually matters. For the end user, meaning the people who are going to play your game, it does not matter how complex, how sophisticated, or how graceful your code is. Code simply allows you to create the systems that make your game run. That's all it is. Your art, your story, your music, the level design, sound design, enemy design, the challenge it gives to the player, the feelings it invokes from the player, all the different characters. These things are the heart and soul of your game, not the code. Don't get me wrong, coding is my absolute favorite part of game development. I love taking static things like sprites and then using code to make them move and make them do what I want when I want based on a button press. That's like magic to me. But code is the nuts and bolts of your game, not the soul. The soul of your game comes from how you take all of the artistic pieces and fit them together to create an experience. Using code, you could make some sort of really complex state machine to move your player, or you can do it like they did in Celeste and just use one script that's just thousands of lines long. No programmer is going to recommend that you do it that way. But again, in the end, for the end user, it really doesn't matter how you get the thing to work in the first place. Getting it to work in a way that matches the design that you have in your mind is what matters. So if you are struggling to code or you are struggling to learn how to code, then here's the best piece of advice that I can give you. And it's very simple. You're gonna break the tasks that you need to accomplish down to their smallest possible micro state. You might end up having dozens of tiny little things you need to do just for one very simple thing in your game. But you will know that you did it right if those steps are small enough that you can Google how to do them if you don't already know how. Let's take a really simple example. Maybe you wanna make a run and gun game like Mega Man or Cuphead. Let's say you've never done this before and you're just trying to code the shooting behavior. So what needs to happen in order for your player to actually shoot a bullet? The player presses a button, the character moves up its arm, a bullet gets spawned into the game, that bullet should be rotated in the direction that it's facing and it should also move in the direction that it's facing. A sound should play and maybe some particles or some screen shake. That bullet needs to damage enemies that it touches. Maybe it explodes or shatters when it makes contact with a wall. And now the shot is done so the character puts its arm back down. That's one very simple thing in a game, but when you actually break it down and do its individual steps like that, it's actually really simple. First, you ensure that your input is getting picked up properly. Maybe you just print a message to the console that says shot fired. Then you get the player animating the shot. Then you spawn in a bullet where the player fired. It doesn't move yet, but you're still on the right track. Then you play the sound and the particles and the screen shake. Get the bullet rotated in the right direction. Get the bullet moving. Get the bullet checking for collisions, right? It's just one really simple, small step after the other. Any of those things that I just mentioned, you could go on Google and ask how to do it in whatever engine you're using. Learning to code takes patience and resilience. But if you're already a talented artist, then you already have patience and resilience. Learning art is a beast, you've already climbed this mountain, you just have to do it again for a different skill set. And if you happen to struggle with code and art, then no worries, you just have a little more to learn. Doesn't matter, you got this. That's all I got, see you next week guys, bye.